As we continue to broadcast live from ESTO 2022, we're heading down to Kentucky, Franklin, Kentucky to be specific. We're talking with Amy and Megan. And on this episode of the podcast, as we are live from ESTO, Amy, Megan, we are going to Kentucky. Well, not technically, but sort of metaphorically. Friends, how are you? Great. Good. We're great. Thanks for having us. Thanks for being here. So uh, tell us a little bit about where you guys are from and kind of what stuff we can look forward to doing. I know you guys have been talking to Paige, so she's yeah. super excited to talk Kentucky. But um, for those of us who not, might not be caught up, where are you guys from and, and what sort of stuff can we do there? So we are from Franklin, Kentucky, and we are a small town of about 20,000 people. We are in the southern, south central part of our state. We're actually on the state line. We're between Nashville and Bowling Green, which is a bigger city in yep. Kentucky. But we're the coolest place on um, I-65, so you need to stop and see us. And um, let's see, what can I tell you about our town? What do you want to know? Well, so let's start, Amy, with you. You know, How did you get in this role? What, what makes you excited about promoting your area you know let's let's start with you so okay how did okay. it tell us your origin story okay I'll tell you okay so I'm actually a native of Franklin so I grew up there went away to college came home and um, I'm a photojournalist it was my degree so I worked in newspaper for 25 years and then decided to make the jump to downtown economic development and um, worked for the Main Street program there for eight years sure and then our tourism director um, retired so I said I think I'd like to do what I've done downtown on a wider scale and so essentially expanded what I was doing took the job in March right a week before COVID hit which was a great time to switch jobs I'm gonna pause you right there and say you are the third person in a day and a half who has started their DMO job four minutes before yes. a global pandemic. It was, it was a so there, lot. So there's a fraternity here you could join. I need to join that secret society of people who have bad timing. <laughs> no, we don't touch each other. In that, that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, I, so I took the tourism position and the first year, honestly, it was work from home and just do the best you can because we needed, among other things, to build up a portfolio of assets that I didn't have access to for the 30 years that I've been a photographer in our town. So I had my personal stuff, but I didn't have the other. So we had to wait for things to start happening again. So um, we are kind of starting from ground zero at our at our um, DMO with everything, publications, advertising, everything. But when things started to pick up, and they have, we've recovered well, things are going well. Um, I was able to finally um, bump up to where I was supposed to be when they originally hired me. And then a couple of months ago, I was able to hire Megan, who has a very similar background than, that I have, which is awesome because she worked in the journalism field also. Yeah, I worked in journalism, and then I actually worked at uh, the newspaper in Franklin, not at the same time as Amy, but... The, the uh, same place. Yeah, same place, and so it was really interesting, and I have the photography and you know the writing background, so it really worked out. And I'm actually from Kalamazoo, Michigan, not from Franklin, so this is really exciting for me because I get to tell everybody where I'm from without doing the hands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So what, what was your, how did you end up in Franklin? Like, what was that journey? Uh, the short version Or is... the long, either, whatever you want to do. <laughs> um, I went to college in Chicago at Columbia College okay. Chicago, yep. and I was freelancing and realized that I wanted um, a full-time gig. And uh, they always tell you, you know, like, go immerse yourself in a market and then figure out what, what you want to do. And um, I found Franklin, because of its location, to a big city, but it also kind of had that small town charm. And I fell in love. And I thought it was going to be a couple year thing. And here I am eight years later. So I've now been at this job just a few months. Just I started months. in May yeah. and I left newspaper in March. And so it's been just super fun. So before she before she left the newspaper, I was already trying to get her to come. <laughs> I was like, I know what I need and I need you to come and do this yeah. and, and you'll be great. And I knew that we had we met each other because of the size of the town and the similarity. So I already knew her personally but um professionally she's amazing she's done a great job oh that's awesome. wonderful all right yes. so what made you fall in love with franklin like what was it that just really resonated with you um well there's so many unique things um you know the art is super particular to the area of course we have the music influence coming from nashville and we're in that bubble um i personally love that johnny cash and june carter got married there i just think it's so cool i was always a big fan um but then you know walk the line came out and it made the hype 
even bigger and now just all of those little details. Um, we have a very cool uh, history museum and center and uh, you can use it to research your own history even if you're not from the town. But you can also find like things that happened all the way back to like the Civil War era because mm -hmm. the Civil War was really big sure. there. Yeah. And so we actually have a house. It's the only octagon shaped brick home in the state of Kentucky. And it's one of few on the historical registry for the country. And uh, it's called Octagon Hall Museum. And um, it was used during the Civil War to actually hide, hide uh, Confederate soldiers. So it was like really interesting history. Um, and it just draws you in. Um, eight years later, I'm still learning things. And there's a lot of oral history there too, because so many people are you know, either still around and remember things. Like there's a lot of people mm -hmm. in town who actually attended the wedding yeah, both um, my, because both they were allowed to go in the church. Wow. Wow. And so they'll say, oh yeah, Johnny walked down the street and that building over there was a flower shop and he went and got her flowers. I mean, there's, there's the oral history. It's just so charming. Yeah, the story um, of how they came to Franklin to do that. So in Tennessee, you had to wait three days, but in Kentucky, you could do your blood test to get it then and get married the same day. So they came and brought their wedding party but went to the courthouse and we're just going to get married at the courthouse so when they walked in and talked to the county judge the preacher from the methodist church which is across the street said well why don't you just come across the street and i'll marry you in the church so from the time it took them to get that blood test and go buy flowers the entire town knew <laughs> if you didn't get inside the church to watch which they let everybody in then you were standing in the courtyard and in the street um, both my grandmothers and my mom were there just i mean every virtually anybody that found out about it then that you know got to see that and there's a really iconic picture of them coming out of the steps when they got married and um we actually have a big blow up of that where you can stick your face through there <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> everybody loves it it's, it's pretty cool but um the church is really you know and the, and they love to tell the story there of the for their 50th wedding anniversary which is a couple of years ago we had um charlie daniels we had a huge concert and um, charlie daniels and carlene carter came and played and and they retold the story they actually had the recording of the wedding and they played that in the church. Oh, wow. And, and it was really neat. And a lot of their family and came. Had, it was really cool. And we had people come from all over the country because they were just insane fans. And they, I mean, it was an opportunity to be that close. I mean, not only Carlene, that's June's daughter. And so she was like just there walking around and just talking to people. And she'd be like, Mama and Papa. And we're like, <laughs> we're never going to get used to that. Yeah. So, yeah, um, really But you cool. should also talk about the inn. Oh yeah, so we have a we have a this is silly we're, we have a new attraction <laughs> that's not new that's about 200 years old. The Sanford Duncan Inn is one of the attractions that we have there that um, was an inn the Sanford Duncan the, the person and his family lived there it was a 300 acre farm. We have about an acre of it now that was donated back to us and the inn is still standing there. When I say inn, it's virtually a two room shack cabin type wow. structure, yeah. but it's it was on the um, Cumberland Parkway at the time, which was the road from Louisville to Nashville, which is now 31W because they built the interstate beside it. But the stagecoaches would stop twice in the morning and twice in the evening, and you could spend the night or you could just stop in and have a drink or you know get out and walk around. But the cool thing about it is, if you look at the map of Kentucky across the bottom, it goes straight and dips down and it comes back up and it goes straight, we're the dip which I'm not supposed to say we're the dip in Kentucky, but we are definitely the triangular dog yeah. dip in Kentucky. And the way that happened is when the surveyors came, the um, Duncans wanted all of their farm included in the Kentucky side. So the, the tale is that they bribed them with bourbon to <laughs> to go around the big tree that was and, and make that dip. So they, they bribed them oh, to wow. come a couple of miles down. So that Because in Tennessee, it was illegal to duel. In Kentucky, it was legal. So people would walk across that state line to that farm, have a drink, get liquored up, go outside and shoot at each other and have a duel, which is the truth. So that ground is dueling grounds. So, I'm like, my mind is blown right I now. Know, I'm just the crazy you know, thing. I need to, seriously, from everything you so guys the, have been saying. The name of the farm is Lincoln Pinch. And I don't know, we don't know where the name came from, but the name of the farm is that. So our distillery in town, we have a craft distillery. So, so Mark named the distillery Dueling Grounds Distillery. The name of his bourbon is Lincoln Pinch. And Kentucky just passed where he can have an off-site tasting site. So we, as of while we got here, um, are able to do off-site tastings now at that On site. And that hasn't been open. We had it, we have it fixed, but we, just, we haven't yeah. been able to, to get it open on a, on a um, regular basis so now 
when we get back. That's our big, huge project is we're going to start being able to have people come there and tour the site. We have a wonderful person who retired from the State Historic Society. That's his thing with Civil War reenactments. He knows his stuff. He's in charge. I'm like, Here's, here are the keys. He tells a wonderful story. They reenact the duel. And now you can have a shot of bourbon and, you know, taste and the bourbon. It. It's and really, have, really a cool combination And for we us. actually have dueling pistols yes. that you load with gunpowder. So when you see the reenactment, it's, you know, aside from any, yeah. any <laughs> real-life injury, sure. you actually get to see it the way yeah. it was. And that's just... And so cool because when I, where else are you yeah. going to see that? So And Sam Houston was the most famous person, I guess, to stop there. Kitty Wells, well, no, wait, I'm, I'm ahead of myself. That's more with the June Carter. Kitty Wells also got married there. That's where I'm grabbing that. But um, Jenny Lynn, she also stayed at the inn. I don't know if you guys yeah, know who absolutely. she is. And um, she and Sam Houston are probably the most famous people that we've tracked from the records. There was a rumor that um, Andrew Jackson once stopped through, yeah. um, but that rumor is at so many attractions in the Tennessee, Kentucky, and like it's very hard um, to pinpoint that. Also, just a random fact, um, during the Civil War, they burned down our original courthouse. All of the documents that, Got it. Yeah, yes, so that'll win with it. So when people like us are trying to go back and really connect those little details, sometimes there's, there's like that giant hole. Yeah, yeah, it's just like somebody took white out, and we go, <laughs> we can kind of guess what happened, but we're still working through it, and eventually we're hoping that you know something will tie those pieces together. But we're always solving a mystery. <laughs> we're always trying. Yeah. So we are at Esto. It's obviously an education conference. You know, Amy, you started mm -hmm. your job four minutes before a global pandemic. You've been at your job for four <laughs> minutes. You know, what right. what what are you guys looking to get out of the next couple of days and what is exciting to you about here? I think some new ideas and maybe some new ways to um, market our town, mostly. Um, we, we, you know, we have the journalism background, but I know there are things out there and of course everything online. Like we're in the middle of an update on our website, which hasn't been done in at least 15 years. And um, we have started some, I actually hired her first as social media, and then it just came, that's a full-time job in and of itself, sure but now is. I've yep. grown, yeah. can you can you design this brochure? And, uh, you know, so just some new ideas and how do other people do things, which is really what I did with the Main Street when I would go to the conferences, I would see, okay, so they're a big city and they do this, but how can I do that at home and make it smaller and make it fit for us? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the smallest idea can make a big change in your town if you can absolutely figure yeah. out how to do it and we're pretty creative with how to make things happen so. but yeah I'm really interested in learning more about how branding is done at you know the different states and what people are doing oh we're using the hashtag visit Franklin KY to really filter any visitors in the photos and you know really trying to get that interaction going but I think the branding is the most interesting mm -hmm. because um, as we heard from a speaker earlier, I mean, it's really your authenticity. It tells who you are, and that's what's going to grab people or not, because if they don't relate to that, you know, they, that might be a hit or miss. So I think from the tourism aspect, just really focusing on branding. And like Amy mentioned earlier, um, you know, our ideas were really starting from ground zero, not just because of the pandemic, but also because we're updating what was done a certain way for 20 years. <laughs> so we really have the opportunity to make it what we hope to make it. So that's true. So, Amy, the, my favorite question to kind of ask, you know, executive directors in, the, in this position is, and I know you, you've been in the position for, let's call it, two and a half years for easy math, right. but um, are there any ideas on the top of your mind, because you've been there for mm -hmm. such a long time, that you would like to be your legacy when you, you know, go to the next chapter? Like, is there something that you're like, this town would be super awesome if we could add this thing or do with that thing and, and I know maybe the dueling grounds yeah. is part of that but like is there another project that you'd be super excited about I think um, what what I'm most passionate about is our is art and our art installation we're a very artsy town we've got the music most no, most of our music people are the musicians for the people that you know the, the artists yes. that live in Nashville yep. so art and music and my biggest thing when I start when I left the newspaper was I wanted to be a town where people would stay like I didn't want everybody to grow up go to college not come home I came home I came home for personal reasons and I love Franklin I did the same thing I walked in the paper and said I will be here two years and then I will leave and you know 20 years later I'm like I am still here <laughs> but but I found that I loved I loved the, the 
part of what I loved about journalism was telling a story. So I wanted, I want to be able to create reasons for 20 year olds to stay and raise their family there. You can still run and go and do other things. We're close enough. But I think getting that mentality there was the most important thing to me for people to say, hey, yeah, we can live there. We don't, we don't have to fight the traffic. You know, you know everybody, you get a flat tire, somebody's gonna stop and help you. You know, some of the things that might not happen in a big, larger city. So that's, I hope that's my legacy. I hope I've made it more livable and more um, attractive. To, to, I want everyone to come, but I also want our hometown people to stay. I really do. And people like you, like I, I've lived there my whole life, so I know what's there, but I like the perspective of somebody coming in and saying this, you know, we could do this and this and this, or this is maybe what you're missing. And with our public art, that's just taken a huge um, jump in our amount of visitors because it, people are coming to see it. What we need to learn how to do is make sure that people know it's there. Yeah, for sure. Because we got cool, really cool stuff going on there. Okay, I just want you to talk about your sculpture park because you guys were <laughs> telling me earlier and I'm obsessed and I'm gonna come visit to see this as well as all the other things that you've mentioned. Okay, you want me to you me tell them? Okay, so we have a high school, um, we have one high school town, so we have a high school um, welding teacher, very creative. And at the end of every school year, his senior students have a project. So their first project was a, a little spaceship, like the little shuttle thing that breaks off of, you know, yeah, and lands yep. in the water usually. Well, in the middle of the night, so it was a big secret that they had built this thing. In the middle of the night, appeared in a field right on our main highway <laughs> with a big parachute attached to it. He actually called me the af that afternoon before, because I knew it was coming and said, you don't have an alien costume, do you? And I was like, actually I do, let me get it. So I took my life-size um, elf on the shelf, put an alien costume on him that we'd use. We had the solar clips came through our town. Yeah. So that yep. is why I had an alien costume, just to clarify. So we put him inside this, and the next morning when, when dawn came, I mean, people started seeing it and calling and, and all the news, all the news people came to see it. I mean, it was it was really it was really neat. And then when you get up close to it, you figure out that it's the high school because of what's written on it. Sure. So um, that was our first. And then from there, it's just exploded. They've made two horses out of horseshoes, life-size horses. We have a, a really cool tree that you can hang locks on, like you see on the bridges yeah. in towns and make a wish. We have um, the fork in the road, which came on down. It's the tallest fork in Kentucky. It's a 20-foot tall fork. It's out in the middle really of the country and um it's it's in the fork you just have to see it but it's really cool and it attracts tons of people and not far from that he's made so many things we ran out of places to put it so when i was in downtown development i was able to say okay let's put the tree here and let's put the horse here and i'm like okay you have to stop <laughs> making things or we have to find a place so we actually have a park now and we have a knife a 20 foot tall knife to go with the fork. We have, what else is out there? The space shuttle thing is out there now. And we have a huge weather vane that is made out of, the top of it is a glider plane that they purchased that was in a University of Pennsylvania in their lobby. And um, then they took the, the poles from the football field that were the light poles, they saved one. He put the glider plane on top of that and it actually rotates. And it tells you if you're north, south, east, or oh, west. Wow. It's really, really cool. Yeah, very cool. And um, they just installed that back in May, I guess, at the end of the school year. And the students, the, the students did it. I mean, they were out there working. That's awesome. So, yeah, it's really cool. And um, the, you know, the locals love it. But it's amazing to see how many people travel through there just to see the art. Mm -hmm. And then we have murals and stuff downtown that. Uh, What's Fairly really new. cool about the sculpture park is the, you know, the welding kids, um, they have their own shop at the high school. And so the goal is that when they graduate, if they want to go into welding, they can walk off the stage and essentially be certified already, which is awesome. But then imagine having the community pride of people literally coming from all over the country to see yes. the largest fork and you made that. And yeah. so like, there's just like a lot of just local pride about it. And it's just a way to show off like the education aspect of the school systems as well. So Very cool. So, so if, you, if you pass through Franklin, the fork in the road has its own GPS. You can just look it up and drive <laughs> straight to it. Will, so. will do. So Amy, if people want to learn more, where, where should they go? I know you're rebuilding the website but when it's rebuilt and yes. ready to go where should they go um it's visit franklin ky but we're also on um, instagram visit franklin ky and on facebook we're still a big facebook town um franklin simpson tourism awesome tourism so Amy. And we are on tiktok as well oh yes we are visit on tiktok franklin now that we have megan <laughs> so we have three i'm gonna have her make one here there you go i tried to get her to do it in the airport and she wouldn't <laughs> too soon <laughs> 
Amy, Megan, thanks for the time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.